So I'm going to tell you about my awakening process. It's been about 25 years in the making and I have come to the point in life where I just feel like I'm finally on the right path. In my early 20s, I had an NDE-like experience. Now, I don't know if I died. I'll, I'll probably never know if I died. But I had a very similar experience to what NDEers talk about. So I was sleeping, it was early morning, and I found myself uh, suddenly shooting through a tunnel towards a light and hearing this beautiful angelic music playing. Um, I don't even know if you could call it music. It was like this, oh, and it just kept getting louder and louder and louder. It was really incredible. Anyway, I didn't reach the light, but I woke up suddenly and... At that point, I didn't know what an NDE was, I had no clue, and I just went about my days. Fast forward basically 10 years later into my 30s, and I had not a similar experience, another NDE-like experience, but this time I was sort of laying on a beach, and again, it was early morning, and I was laying on a beach, and... I could feel the water sort of coming up over my legs. And suddenly I was sort of floating above my body, but not looking down, I was looking up towards light. Beautiful, beautiful light. And the feeling from this light, as you've probably heard if you're watching this, you're probably on the NDE path. Um, it was incredible. It was indescribable. The love feeling that came from this light was beyond anything I had ever felt in this world and probably won't feel again until that day comes. <laughs> Fast forward again a few years and I found myself having a dark night of the soul or what we call the dark night of the soul. I became really sick. Um, not long after graduating, I had gone to school to be a designer, uh, an industrial designer, where I would design my life was going to be designing product. I really, this is actually something I've never talked about, but I really, really wanted to get into the field of prop design for Star Trek. <laughs> So after graduating, I ended up working at a company down in Toronto and I don't know what to say, but my soul just said, no, this is not your path and shut me down. Now I had been ignoring my soul for a while, what I needed from life for a while and was really concerned with school and climbing the ladder and doing all those things, corporate story kind of stuff. So I found myself now very sick. Uh, now when I say sick, I mean very rare, out of the blue sleeping disorder. Um, I won't get into it, but it was pretty bad. I ended up in um, the walk-in clinic like every few days begging for help. Now, of course, this sleeping disorder, as you can imagine, no sleep at all for weeks landed me um, in an anxious mess, a depressed mess. And I found myself basically sitting on my couch, unable to move throughout the day, watching YouTube, because that's all that would keep me from losing it. <laughs> so after a while, not too long, but after a while, I found myself coming up and up and up, and I had friends that were hypnotists, that are hypnotists. And they helped me through hypnosis to come out of that dark, dark spell. <laughs> so what ended up happening was um, over the course of a year and a bit, uh, I found myself wanting to go back into work, the work field. Now, the design field had taken me, in my eyes, down this path of sickness. Probably wasn't the design, it was just I wasn't listening to myself. So I ended up training to be a hypnotist because I thought, wow, if this is how I came out of my rut, out of anxiety, depression, sleeping disorder with hypnosis, then I want to help 
others with that. Now keep in mind with all this going on that I had had those two NDE-like experiences. Again, don't know if I died, probably never will, but they were, I'm gonna say pivotal in my life, sort of really opening up maybe what's out there. So now I found myself miraculously training to be a hypnotist. During my training, we had to train in self-hypnosis so that we could help people with self-hypnosis. And during my training, I had a very other, not otherworldly, out-of-body type experience when I was going through self-hypnosis training specifically. I found myself in, suddenly, in a meadow. Around that meadow, there were beautiful mountains. And throughout the meadow, on my left, there were just tons and tons of people. And they were scattered about in the meadow, but they were mainly on my left. On my right, there was, and I don't know why I didn't grow up with uh, this archetype in my life, but Jesus was there, the energy signature of Jesus. And Jesus was there, and then I looked again to my left and found myself experiencing, like, all the karma that I had throughout lifetimes with each of those people in the meadow. I couldn't even tell you what they looked like, but it was incredibly impactful. Like, I, I it was, it was so much all at once, it, you know, it was like I was experiencing every single life all at once. Not the whole life, but just the karmic parts. And it was so jarring that I, I came out of self-hypnosis very quickly. And at that point, I forgot to say that um, as I was training in self-hypnosis, I felt like I had two very, um, just angels almost, like right at my shoulders. They weren't white uh, angels, they were dark, which is interesting. So they were dark angels, but they felt comforting and strong. And so they were there um, before the Jesus <laughs> out-of-body thing. They were there. And when I came back to the self-hypnosis sitting in the room from that jarring experience, they were there to give me strength in some way. I didn't know exactly why they were there beforehand, but now it was kind of evident. So I said to myself, all right, I, I want to figure this out, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to go back to that experience and see what happens. So I went back into self-hypnosis and then found myself back in that meadow. The people that I had had those karmic relationships with, they were all standing shoulder to shoulder in a line that went down the left side. And... Jesus was handing me, so he was right there, and he was handing me this beautiful, I don't know, crystal, blue crystal stone into my hand, and I would take it from my hand, and I would place it in the heart of the people that were in that lineup. And it just felt like I was creating a connection between that person. Maybe I was sort of capping off the karmic thing that was happening beforehand. So... Now, I should say, years later, um, in another med meditation, I recognized that those people from that experience were to be my clients moving forward, which was super interesting. So that experience ended, but you know, that was just part of the experience. It didn't really end there. It was a snowstorm that night, and I was driving up the highway back home from training. I found myself having this sudden conversation with source god jesus I, I don't know to this day it probably doesn't matter but i found myself feeling more and more like absolutely connected to the universe and absolutely knowing that it doesn't end here on earth i i could feel my let's say higher self my soul self my super conscious self and i felt like almost it was like a a pillar of light that connected this body, my soul, that fractal of soul with my higher self. And I could feel the connection and it was undeniable. And it was so undeniable that I was just, I was just living on cloud nine. Like I came, came home and my life was just totally different. I ate different. I felt different fears, jealousies, things I struggled with for so many years fell away. And it was just this 
beautiful experience that lasted between three weeks and a month. So as you can imagine, my whole life changed and I felt like I was just, like I said, on cloud nine, life had changed. I was thinking differently, eating differently, living differently and totally connected through this what I imagined at the time and still imagine when I think back is like this pillar of light that's just connecting me and my divine self. This was about to have a huge impact on my hypnosis career. Though that paired with my NDE-like experiences really set me down the path of working with people in the spiritual realm, uh, channeling realm, past life, life between lives, hypnosis regressions. Now, this will be in another video because it's too much to add to this video, but I have had a lot of extraterrestrial um, experiences and those also led to what I do in hypnosis as well. But that will be another video for another day. So just to kind of show you that I, I really want you to know that reaching that connection is absolutely possible. You know, I, I didn't think it to be true. I would see people talk about it. I, I would hear people talk about it and I would read it in books. And it was very, it was like an intellectual concept to me. It wasn't a visceral, like tangible <laughs> body feeling concept until it actually happened. And if I leave you with any little tidbit of information today to help you move forward is just keep meditating, keep going inward, keep connecting because you're already connected. It's just finding that pillar of light and it's there. It's there. And so connect in with your higher self, connect in with your super conscious. I know you can because I did and I wasn't even looking for it, right? I wasn't even looking for it. So keep going. If you have any questions, if you want to do hypnosis, reach out to me. My link is below.